assalam alaikum my dear students today we are going to discuss about the life cycle of postilago in the last lecture we have studied about the introduction of postilago so we can write here life cycle of postilago so when we talk about the life cycle of postilago actually it consists of many phases so which are the phases which are involved in the life cycle of postilago we are writing here first phase which is involved in the life cycle of postilago is known as attack of attack of chlamydospores attack of chlamydospores the second phase in the life cycle of postilago is the formation of formation of promycelium promycelium and keep in mind that these chlamydospores are also known as teleutospores these are also known as teleutospore so the second phase is the formation of promycelium next is the third phase and third phase in the life cycle of postilago is known as formation of formation of basidio spores basidio spores and next is the fourth phase and the fourth phase in the postilago life cycle is known as formation of secondary mycelium secondary mycelium and the fifth and last phase in the life cycle of postilago is known as formation of chlamydospore formation of chlamydospores and these are also known as teleutospore teleuto spores so don't be confused in these phases that the first phase is the attack of chlamydospore or teleutospore but the last phase is the formation of teleutospore or chlamydospore so we will try to discuss one by one all these phases so in the first we are going to discuss that about the attack of chlamydospore or also these are known as teleutospore actually we can write here attack of teleutospores and these are also known as chlamydospores these are also known as chlamydospores actually these spores attack on the wheat plant during the spring season so we can write here teleutospore attack is occur during the spring season so we can write here attack of teleutospore spores will occur on wheat plant on wheat plant during spring season spring season actually they will attack on the plant of the wheat so for example this one is the plant of wheat these are the roots and this one is the stem of the wheat plant and this one is the inflorescence actually this one is inflorescence and these spore attack on the inflorescence of the wheat plant so what are the meanings of the word inflorescence actually inflorescence mean arrangement arrangement of flowers on plant the word inflorescence mean arrangement of flowers or ears on the plant is known as inflorescence so actually these teleutospore act on the 
in fluorescence of wheat plant and instead of producing the grains here actually these are the sites where grains are produced but instead of producing the grains here these tenutospores are produced and they will produce in the form of black black powdery material so actually this one is a black powdery mass and we also know that the one thing which is very important to keep in mind you is that infected plants in fluorescence will emerge earlier than normal or non infected plant so these are actually the spores which are produced instead of grains and this is a these this is consist of black powdery mass and this black powdery mass actually consist of spores and these spores are known as teluto spores these are known as teluto spores actually so how these teluto spores are look like actually these are unicellular all the spores are unicellular but keep in mind these are binucleated these are unicellular but by nucleated these are unicellular and by nucleated so what will happen when these chlamydospores are produced next we are going to discuss now about the second phase which is known as the formation of promycidium so how these spores which are unicellular these are by nucleated how these cell germinate to produce a new structure which is known as promycidium for example this one is an infected plant and here these teluto spores are produced here these are the teluto spores actually when these teluto spores are produced then these are dispersed by wind and these spores will fall on young and healthy new plant of wheat for example this one is a young and healthy new plant of wheat these spores actually fall on this healthy plant when they will reach at this new healthy plant i can write here this one is a new healthy plant and this plant will be infected by these spores and these spores are known as teluto spores teluto spores actually so what will happen when these teluto spores are reached into a new or a healthy plant of wheat so when these will reach at this new plant they will fuse each other for example these are the two nuclear or two spores these spores will fuse each other when these two nuclei will fuse each other then they will be converted into a diploid zygote so this one is a diploid zygote which is formed as a result of fusion of teluto spore so what will happen and this is the phase which is known as the formation of promycidium it means we are discussing that how these teluto spores will produce a promycidium now this diploid zygote is formed and diploid zygote is looking like this because this is the fusion of the two nuclei and now this is converted into a diploid zygote so what will happen when this diploid zygote is formed actually this diploid zygote undergoes a process of meiosis and we know that meiosis results the four haploid nuclei so we can write here meiosis will occur and in the zygote four haploid nuclei are produced four haploid nuclei so actually these are four nuclei and these four nuclei are produced as a result of meiosis and these all are the 
haploid nuclei haploid nuclei so what will happen when these haploid nuclei are formed each of this nuclei will be separated by a septum for example this is a septum and this is separating uh, two cells and again this is a septum and this is dividing into each other from each other so each nucleus is now converted into a spore and each spore which is actually a haploid spore for example these are the spores these are the spores i am drawing here due to better understand these are the four haploid spores i am making here each spore will produce a germ tube for example this one is a spore and each will producing a germ tube for example this one is a germ tube so it means this germ tube is produced by these haploid nuclei actually this germ tube will be converted into a new mycelium now this diploid sorry this germ tube is now converted into a mycelium and this mycelium is known as promycelium this mycelium is known as promycelium so up till now we have discussed the two phases the first phase was the attack of chlamydospore and the second phase is the formation of promycelium so now promycelium is produced up till now so now we are going to discuss the next phase which is known as formation of basidiospore that means how basidiospores are produced actually for example these are the haploid nuclei or a haploid spores and these haploid spores produce this structure and this structure is known as germ tube this one is a germ tube this germ tube again enlarged and due to enlargement of germ tube so now this whole structure from here up to here now this whole structure is known as promycelium you have studied in this point this promycelium will grow and make in large structure at their tip at their tips and these in large structures are known as stalagmita these are known as stalagmita so each stalagmita will divide mitotically and produce these spores and these spores are known as basidiospores these spores are known as basidiospores so in this lecture we have studied about so actually these are haploid spores these are germ tubes these are promycelium this is a promycelium this is promycelium these are actually promycelium these are stalagmita and these are known as basidiospores these are basidiospores actually so up till now we have discussed attack of chlamydospore formation of attack of a chlamydospore or teleutospore formation of promycelium and the formation of basidiospore so formation of secondary mycelium and formation of chlamydospore we will discuss in the next lecture